Okay, this sermon's entitled, I am not against sanctification. And people say that I am, you know what? They're, they're just liars. Um, here's what I am against, though. Let me open with prayer, then with a few verses. I'm going to explain to you my position on this. Dear God, thank you for allowing me to uh, preach this sermon and to explain what your word says and to um, just go over your clear word. I just pray that you allow me to uh, be clear and lucid as I preach as I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, <clears throat> here's the deal. Sanctification is a work of God, and it's not by our works, it's by our faith. There's actually a verse that talks about our sanctification is by faith. Let me see if I can find that verse. I was just looking at that a minute ago. Hang on one second. Okay, Acts chapter uh, 26, verse 18. To open their eyes and to turn them from, from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive for forgiveness of sins and inheritance among, among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Of course, it's Jesus talking, faith in Jesus. But here's why I don't preach sanctification as part of salvation. For one, <clears throat> that's Roman Catholic theology. That's the, one, the first reason I don't teach that. Two, the Bible makes it clear that there are people that are not sanctified. They're not lived, I mean, they're sanctified positionally, but they're not sanctified experientially. Positional sanctification which actually is actually what this is talking about. Experiential sanctification is a daily, you know, process of letting God work through us, and the good works that we do are not are not part of our sanctification. They are results of it. That's what that's what I believe. And um, but here's why I don't I don't preach it. I know people literally that became Catholic, and at one point they were just everything was fine. They had joy. They had certainty. They they knew they were, they had assurance of their salvation. I know two people I'm thinking of, literally, they were on fire for God, and they prayed heavily, they were reading the Bible, and they were going to, ch going to church, they seemed to have a lot of joy, and then all of a sudden, they got, they fell into this, they, they went started going to this Catholic church, and from that point on, both of these people kept doubting their salvation. They kept wondering if they were sanctified enough, if they were doing enough good works, they never felt they, they were doing good enough. And they kept, they kept saying, no, sanctification's got to be there. It's just the same as justification. But that's, that's not true, though, because justification takes place at a moment in time. Sanctification, experientially, is an ongoing process. But the thing is, I, I, I teach that we should be sanctified, and I encourage us as believers to be sanctified in the Word. It, it has to do with getting in the Word. And I'm not against sanctification. I'm against lordship salvation. Okay, there's a big difference between sanctification and lordship salvation. For one, sanctification's found in the Bible, lordship salvation's not. So I, I'm tired of people accusing me of, of I'm against sanctification because I because I teach people we don't have to be to be saved. There's a lot of things we don't have to do to be saved doesn't mean I teach against them. We don't have to read the Bible to be saved in, in terms of continually reading it. We don't have to pray heavily to be saved. We don't have to fast to be saved. We don't have to tithe to be saved. We don't have to do good works to be saved. But I'm not preaching against any of those things. I believe we should do all those things, and then some. I believe we should read the Bible every day. I believe we should tithe. I believe we should pray. I believe we should you know, repent of our sins. But I don't believe we have to do that stuff to be saved, because we're saved by God's grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. So just because I don't add something into to salvation does not mean I'm against it. <clears throat> and um, people are ridiculous in their claims that they're making, and I do teach we should be sanctified. In fact, I, if you're not sanctified on a daily basis, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna have, you're gonna be, gr you know, ha have a lot of grief. Okay, the Bible teaches us to be sanctified. Look at, look at John 17, verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Now, what he's saying is, in order for you to help others to be sanctified, you're going to have to get into the Word yourself. And you, and you, you sanctify yourself by reading the Bible. Now, turn to Romans chapter 8. <clears throat> okay, look at verse 30. Okay, moreover, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. So no, glorification is it has to be there because the Bible says so. Justification, it's definite. What's missing out of these in these verses? Sanctification, it's missing. 
So why should I teach something when this is clearly talking about salvation here? C called, justified, glorified. You know, I mean, this is clearly talking about salvation. Now why would I teach something that the, the Apostle Paul left out? The Bible tells us not to add to God's word, not to just add something in there just because we want it to fit, we want it to be there. So yes, yeah, sanctification is optional. It's not, it's not guaranteed. That's the difference between what I believe in and what a Calvinist believes. They believe sanctification is guaranteed. It's part of salvation. It's not there. So I'm going to believe what the Bible says, not what my tradition says. But yes, as far as me teaching sanctification, I teach we should be sanctified. Through thy truth, thy word is truth. So all these accusations people make are lies. <clears throat> That's all I have. Dear God, thank you for allowing me to preach this sermon explaining your word. And it's, clearly, it's clear what these verses are saying. That we're declared righteous by faith alone in Christ alone. And then we are guaranteed to be glorified. And that the, the reality of that glorification is, is the moment we're sanctified. Excuse me. The moment we're justified. Because sanctified is not in that verse. And they, the people that want to say I'm wrong, they have to say the Bible's wrong. Because I just gave you what the Apostle Paul wrote in plain English. Keep us safe, keep us real. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.